Yeah, with with canceling the joint practices with the Saints is, is where we are as a team, a little banged up. So I thought it's in the best interest of our team, right, and putting our guys first that you know we should do the joint practices. And thankful to uh, Dennis and the Saints for you know the opportunity to have the joint practice and you know with them working with us being understandable. Also thankful to our support staff. Probably putting them in a bind right now. <laughs> They're on the, but uh, they've been very helpful. Everybody's been on board with what we're doing. And one thing we always talk about is you know team first mentality, and that w- that went into the decision. So thankful for you know Cal and his support, and also our support staff. Is there a certain number of players that you would have needed? Or was it just kind of the feeling looking at the team? I was just looking at our team and where we are now. Just okay. felt that. It wouldn't have been as productive as we would have liked it to be if we went to uh, New Orleans. But the uh, the flip side of it is we get the opportunity to treat this week as a, a normal in season game week for us. So I think there is benefits to that for our whole entire team, our coaching staff, to be able to go through uh, the process of a normal in season week. And we'll see. We're not fully game planning uh, against the Saints, but we'll just go through how we'll operate with the end season schedule. And I think that'll be beneficial or, to our guys. What do you think about the practices you want to have once you guys get back out there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? What do you want to see from the guys this week heading into the game? Because it's still obviously guys are competing for jobs and trying to make this game. Yes, yeah, so with these practices, our guys are still competing. Uh, and what I want to see from our guys as we go out to practice is just improve on the, the fundamentals and the techniques, things we need to improve on from the game, things we can get better at. It's things that we can control, which is encouraging. And so that's what I'm looking for our guys to just hone in on the details of their assignments, the details of their job, and see if we can get you know, a little bit better this week. And I think this would be a great opportunity to do that going against each other. How many days of rehabilitation do you think it's going to be just to get the bodies back? We have so much to know that aspect to get the bodies back. Uh, each player is different when it comes to, you know, that rehabilitation process after guys play games. You know, some guys bounce back in two, three days. Some guys it takes a little longer. But each guy will be, you know, handled accordingly on an individual basis how it should be. You know, Titus, before the game, looked like he had his cast off. It seemed like a promising sign. Any updates on him? Do you think he might have week one? I think Titus is improving. He's doing well. Uh, just pleased with where he is and – Look forward to him continuing to improve, but he, he's headed on the right track for sure. Coach, after going back and watching the film, what was it about the defense that wasn't able to stop him on third down? Uh, with, when it comes to third down, it always comes to rush and coverage. So the rush has to improve. It has to be better with the rush, and the coverage has to improve, right? When you know we want to play tight coverage, we have to be tight on our guys. We have to make a challenge and make the offense make a tough throw, tough catch, right, to put them – put them on their heels a bit, and we didn't do that. The coverage wasn't tight enough. The rush wasn't good enough. And if we want to play, you know, great on third down and get off the field, right, we have to be tighter on both ends. Uh, Chase is still dealing, dealing with some things, too. Hopefully he can be, get back to us pretty soon. Miko, what can you do to simulate uh, a practice against the Saints for CJ? It like that would have helped him. What do you think? Yeah, with with the quarterback and with everyone, I think what we can do is we can kind of simulate as as close as possible, right? We don't want to go all in on simulating all game plan type work week, but we can give them you know different looks that they'll see from the Saints as best we can to simulate that. It won't be, of course, as good as the joint practice is actually going against a different opponent, different scheme, but we'll try to get it as close as possible. And as long as our guys, at the end of the day, as long as our guys are prepared, we know what to do, we know how to do it, and we go control what we can control, I think that'll be very beneficial for us. So when you go back and you watch the film, what did you like about you seeing here? I thought Juice did a really nice job of communicating, first and foremost. At that center position, we ask a lot of them and communicating. And you see a young guy as a rookie and him handle the communication that he has to handle up front is very impressive with how far along he is to be such a young player. So I'm very encouraged with where Juice is and knowing how much better he's going to be as he continues to get reps and continues to play with, you know, the same guys around him. So it's, it's impressive to see. I know you said Tank had some tightness on Saturday. 
Saturday. Can you update how, how's he doing? How's his progress? Uh, we'll see where he is. Yeah, still haven't gotten an update, but we'll see where he is. CJ had a couple of throws, one to Robert Woods on third down and two other throws on the road to Noah Brown. Um, what does that say about CJ's ability to be able to put those passes where only his receivers can get them? Yeah, with the passes that CJ made, you see the accuracy. Right, what you saw in college, you saw CJ just playing comfortable, and that was, it was, uh, it was exciting to see him just playing loose, making the throws that we've all seen him make in practice. We've seen him make at Ohio State, so you saw him just being himself and being comfortable, and that's what he can do. Just have to continue to get more reps, so he can continue to be even more comfortable when he's in those game-like situations. Nothing is more important than getting reps, right? Real, actual reps in games, and that was, it was fun to see him just the game slow down a little bit and to see him make the plays that we have all seen him make. Go, 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 go. You look at how you can practice that. How tough is it to, obviously, tackling is a, is a physical thing. It also increases sometimes the risk of injury. What is the plan for trying to get the guys to have better run fits and tackle? Yeah, with with the tackling, with the run fits, it all it starts in walkthrough, and it starts just being attentive to the details of your job. And then when the tackling, right, we have to put them in as close to a, a live tackling session as possible. That's just putting yourself most of the time with tackling. It's just about taking the proper angle, right, and putting your body exactly where it's supposed to be, and that can improve. We will emphasize that this week and see where our guys can get better. Coach, you sit down with the. Me go on the on the third down with the delay of game on the goal line. Was there a thought there by you to maybe call a timeout, avoid that penalty, and stay on the one yard line? Yeah, there was a thought there. I could have been better just going down to save us. I thought we would be able to get lined up and we would get it off, but it seemed to me that you know we weren't going to get it done. So I could have sprinted down and got the timeout sooner. Is that one of those game operation things that, that you talk about with CJ where? Is that a him thing? Is that a him and Bobby thing? How does something like that happen? It's a, it's a team thing overall. We start with me first. I can be better there, and I will be better. Coach, when you sit down with, uh, with Bobby and Matt this week, how will you all go through the process of planning out the playing time for your starters in the last preseason? All right, that's that's a great question. That's uh, with the changes in practice, right? Of us, we initially had the joint practices scheduled, but now with us just being here, going against each other, I think our plan with that will change. So we'll discuss that later in the week, and I'll have an update for you later. Thank you. Thank you. How have you used the preseason to uh, figure out the workflow on the sideline coaching through that? I mean, you've had two games. And it looks like um, uh, looks like Burke's got the play sheet sometimes and how, you know you guys had a way of doing things in, with the 49ers on defense too just how have you used the preseason with yeah. yeah well we we've used the preseason in a way there where Burke has called the plays throughout the preseason and you know, I've had my input as well and it's been it's been running fairly smoothly over the over the past two weeks and, and as a like coach what does that allow you I don't what are you learning about how you can use your time yeah, I mean, I'm learning when when either side of the ball is up, I'm available. And that's, you know, how I viewed these past two weeks. That's how I've used it. So I'm available to those guys on, on defense when I need to add some input, also on offense as well. So it's been the communication flow, the workflow on the sideline, the communication amongst not only me and the coordinators, but our entire coaching staff has been, it's been excellent. Right, for sure. When you look at our linebacker position, it is about right having the best three guys when we do play base defense. Not a lot of base defense is being played now with the, the way the NFL is going, a lot more passing, a lot more 11 personnel. So you will see more two linebacker sets or one linebacker sets on the defense. So it's about having who are those best guys, but it's most importantly it's about having the versatility of guys who can play multiple spots at the linebacker position, not only linebacker, but also secondary wise, safety, nickel, corner, having guys who can do multiple roles, it just and it just really helps us as a defense to be as flexible as possible. How 
I think the change in the cut has really it's been it'll be very beneficial to a lot of the young players, right, who probably wouldn't get that extra week of work to actually see improvement and see growth in their game to allow them to showcase a little bit more of what they can do to possibly be added onto an active roster or a practice squad. So I think the moving the cut day is really helpful to the guys where you get more opportunity, more time to spend with the guys. They get more reps in his, in his last preseason game as well. So I think it's very beneficial. We know it'll be a lot of guys, you know, on the wire in one day, but you do get an extra look at guys, which I think is it's encouraging to a lot of these young guys who've been putting in work, right, from OTAs and training camp. They deserve the opportunity to get another week to showcase that they belong. So uh, I'm happy with how it is right now. So what, what is your philosophy on managing a game at this point? I know it's not the regular season game yet, but you used to be able to just focus on defense and what was going on there. Like, what have you, what, what, what is kind of, expanded for you? Where, where do you find yourself? Uh, well, I, I find myself in a game management role. I find myself that it takes it's, – it's about more than just myself. So I have a lot of good help when it comes to that game management role of other, you know, staff helping me out when it comes to that. And it's been going pretty smooth. What's your philosophy when it comes to playing reps for maybe guys who are on the Yeah, we'll see. It, it's all right. It's all a process. It won't be about right with the roster. It won't be about just you know one game or one week of practice. It's a cumulative, you know, effect of. I mean, we've seen these guys for a long time, so it's a matter of just how have guys just shown improvement? What have they shown? Have they shown that? Man, there is some promise. We would like to work with the guy. The guy has some tools to work with. He just needs a little bit more time. I think you you find that out throughout the course of your uh, time being with guys. It's not just a rash decision that's made, you know, at the end of cuts. Yeah, Jacob has done a, a good job in practice. He's he's been consistent in practice, and he's shown that shown. Uh, ability to set the edge, to rush the passer. So encouraged with some of the things Jacob has done in practice and, you know, that he went out there first in the game. And that's what preseason is all about, right? There are no starters or nothing is set. It's just about us seeing, right, what what can our team actually look like and giving guys multiple looks, multiple opportunities. We'll close with DJ and Drew. Um, on the drive where you guys got a field goal, um, that third down in the middle ground, it seemed like the TJ might have been just Yeah, it's a matter of actually getting it in that live action. You know, it's one thing to practice, right, but to actually see him adjust on the fly and make those type of plays to see how tight the windows are, right, it's encouraging to see him make the plays. And it's also – it's very important for him to feel that in the actual action. So that's why, again, I say the preseason is very important for – rookies in general all across the league. A lot of guys, their first time playing NFL football, you have to get a feel for the game. No rookie is coming out and just taking the league by storm. It's a process where guys have to learn, grow, develop, adapt to how the NFL works. And that, that's why you'll see some guys do it quicker than others, and some guys just need a little time. But I'm very you know, pleased with where our rookies are. And their one or two games that they've played, I thought I think all of them are headed in the right direction. They've shown shown promise, and they're doing a good job. How helpful has it been having Jonathan Joseph around, and then in a broader sense, what sort of impact has the, the Bill Walsh uh, diversity fellowship had on, on this program? On the yeah, thank you for the question. I think that the Bill Walsh program is is very vital, right, to the NFL. A lot of a lot of guys who normally wouldn't get opportunities are getting opportunities to join staffs and see how the workflow goes in the NFL. And it's been great having Jonathan Joseph around. I think he's been really instrumental in helping our, our young uh, defensive backs, especially working with uh, Stingley, right? And him just being able to relate to him. He's been in that position. He understands what it looks like. He understands what it takes to be a, a really great player. And I was very happy to have him around and working with those guys. And with the Bill Watch program, when you look at our staff, when I first had the guys in, I just asked all our guys who were, were a part of that program to stand up, 
right? And you look at our staff, and I think we have about five or six guys who are a part of that program who are now on the NFL coaching staff. So it shows that the program is definitely vital, and it's uh, it's important to see guys get the opportunities and know that you know there are a lot of great coaches out there that just need the opportunity, and that's what the Bill Walsh program provides. So I'm happy with the program and thankful for all the guys that we had come and help us this training account to be a part of. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thank you.